ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوته من خلقه ارسله بين يدي الساعه بشيرا ونذيرا فبلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الله به الغمه وتركنا على محجة بيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما one of the first instructions with the sunrise of islam after the advent of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the commandment to maintain ties with kinship. وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَى حَقَّهَ And give the relative his due right. And to show how important this matter is, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it a condition of faith. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhiri fal yasil rahimah. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He who believes in Allah on the day of judgment, the last day, let him maintain ties with kinship. Not only that, but Allah Azza wa Jal coupled it with His right, coupled the right of kinship and fulfilling their due rights to His right of being feared and being conscious of. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ so be conscious of Allah through whom you ask each other your rights and be conscious of the ties of kinship, meaning to fulfill them and not to violate them. And out of the mercy of Allah, just like every other commandment in Islam, though we are obliged to fulfill, still Allah Azza wa Jal promises reward for fulfilling them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, whoever is pleased that his provisions become abundant, expand, and that his life expands or another interpretation to the word 
ينسى أو نسأ is to be blessed, increased with blessings. How can I get this, O oh Allah? How can I get my provisions to become abundant, increase, and add barakah to my life? فَلْيَصِلْ رَحِيمَهَا Let him maintain ties with his kinship. Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, said, whoever fears Allah, maintains ties with kinship, will get the first as abundance in provision, blessings in his life, and his relatives will love him. Now, who are these? Who is included in kinship? Ar-Rahim. That is mentioned in religious texts. Shaykh ibn Baz, may Allah have mercy on him, listed them saying, it is anything coming from the sides of the father or the mother. <clears throat> grandparents and great-grandparents going up, grandchildren and great-grandchildren going down. And then branches like brothers, sisters, paternal and maternal aunts and uncles, and their children or offspring. All of these are included in the definition of Al-Arham. Ibn al-Arabi, may Allah have mercy on him, said, according to the consensus of the Muslim scholars, Muslims are obliged to maintain ties with kinship and it is absolutely forbidding for them to sever ties with kinfolks. In addition to this, you need to note that even if kinship is not a Muslim, if they're non-Muslims, you are still instructed to maintain ties with them. How do we maintain ties? Sheikh Al-Uthaymeen, rahmatullahi alayhi, May Allah have mercy on him, said, There is no set limit or way to maintain ties. It is case by case. It's case dependent. One, of, one person might have a poor relative and therefore he needs money. So maintaining ties with this particular person or, a person or in this particular case would be by giving him money. Another person has a problem with his wife, so maintaining ties will be reconciling. Another is ill, maintaining ties will be visiting him, and so on and so forth. In addition to the general rights of every Muslim, kinships have an additional set of rights because of their relationship with the person. And we need to note that the closer the relative is, the greater the right becomes and the severer the warning and punishment becomes in severing ties or violating their rights. Being kind to them. Asma bin to Abi Bakr. And this is reported in the book of Imam al-Bukhari. She said, my mother came while she was still a polytheist after the commission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And she wanted something from me. So I went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and said, my mom came visiting me and she wants something from me. Should I be kind to her? He said, yes, be kind to your mother. Now this is a non-Muslim mother. This is a non-Muslim relative. Still the command from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came as yes, maintain ties. Visiting kinfolks, 
Now, the frequency of this depends on what people are accustomed to. But generally, kinship needs to be or must be visited. Now, what if they are in a different country? Or within the same country, but they're at a distance. Sheikh ibn Baz said, if one calls them or texts them, then he has fulfilled the right of being in touch. That takes the place of visitation. In the book of Al Imam Al Bukhari. And this is a golden rule. This is a golden rule set by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, defining how I deal with my relatives. What is the extent of patience in return of? their evil conduct or harm to me. See, maintaining ties with relatives is not matching them. They're good to me, I'm good to them. They're evil to me, I'm evil to them. No, no, no. This is not how we are taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You need to do your right. You need to fulfill their rights. Fulfill your duty. And leave everything else aside, irrespective of their behavior or your personal feelings. You must fulfill that right. He said, "Laysa al-wasilu bil mukafir." The one who maintains ties is not he who matches what his relatives do to him. Rather, he said, "Alayhi salatu wasalam." The one who maintains ties is the one who maintains it even if others sever their ties. So we don't make it a matching equation. It needs to be at equilibrium. They're good, I'm good. They're evil, I'm no, this doesn't work this way. You need to be good even if they're evil to you. Addima <laughs> alayk. Fulfill your duties. And ask Allah for your rights. But when we're asked by Allah Azza wa Jal, did you fulfill? We'll be safe saying, yes, I did. No justification will work on the day of judgment. Well, he did this to me and he did that to me. You need to fulfill the rights, even if they don't. One of the most fruitful and beneficial means of bringing the hearts closer of those relatives with whom you have disputes or who harm you and are evil to you, in addition to being patient, as we mentioned, is to supplicate. Allah Azza wa Jal for them. You see, supplicating to your fellow Muslim in their absence has a lot of goodness in it. The first of which is that it is an accepted dua. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the supplication of the Muslim to his fellow Muslim is accepted. There is an allocated angel at his head. Whenever he supplicates Allah for something good to his fellow Muslim, his Muslim brother, the angel would first say, Ameen. Oh Allah, accept this. And then he would say, And for you is the same. You need something from Allah? Supplicate to one of your brothers in his absence. You will get it 
Allah willing, based on this narration. One of the people of knowledge said, one of the greatest fruits of supplicating to those relatives with whom you have dispute is that it has an amazing impact on their hearts. They don't know. But you're supplicating Allah for them. It softens their heart and brings it closer to yours. I know one of my wife's relatives who's done this. And he said, after trying it, I saw an amazing effect of that. How close and fast that relative came back to me and was kind after he severed ties with me. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Given then charity. In the book of Al-Imam Ahmed, then classified as authentic by Al-Albani, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أفضل الصدقة إن أفضل الصدقة صدقة على رحم كاشح. He said the best charity one can give is that which one gives to a relative who has enmity towards him. Why? It softens his heart. It breaks your ego. No, I'm not going to do it. No, do it. And this helps. It will reunite the hearts again. Also in the book of Imam Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, the Prophet وسلم, said, spending charity on a needy person is considered to be a charity. Meaning you get the reward of spending charity. While giving charity to kinship is considered charity and maintaining ties with kinfolks. So you get double the reward. One of the uh, greatest rights of relatives is to protect them from the fire of hell by advising them, guiding them, guiding them, teaching them, instructing them, showing them the path to Jannah. So it would be, it would be nice next time we, we visit any of our relatives to bring up a subject that's beneficial for them. That would teach them something. That will correct a misconception or a wrong behavior. The least one can do is send them text messages through any means, through any medium, right? Perhaps reminding them with a ruling that they might be forgetting or unaware of. Giving them a general reminder that would soften their hearts. Addressing an issue that's confusing and guiding them to the correct path. Remember the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, He who guides others to virtue will get their reward. Will get the reward of the person who did it. Or does it? And to conclude the list, and the list can go on, is to reconcile. Disputes happen, disagreements happen, fights happen, right? So be a positive element in the family between relatives.
the Prophet وسلم, to show how important reconciling and ending disputes between people is said, and this is reported again by Imam Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, Should I not guide you to a rank that is higher than prayer, fasting, and spending charity? They said, Indeed. He said, To reconcile between people. And finally, there is a stern warning. There is a seri it's a serious matter to violate these rights. Because in addition to missing out on and losing the great rewards of maintaining ties, one subjects himself to many things. I will just list a couple. The curse of Allah. Al-Hasan ibn Ali, may Allah have mercy on him. And this is not Al-Hasan ibn Ali radiallahu anhu, the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. This is a great, great grandchild. He was talking to, him, to his son once and he advising him. He said, son, never be friend. Never be in the company of a person who severs ties with kinship. Because I, I saw, meaning I read, in the book of Allah that he is cursed. Allah says, فَهَلْ عَسَيْتُمْ إِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ أَن تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَتُقَطِّعُوا أَرْحَامَكُمْ أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهِ So would you perhaps if you turn away and spread corruption on earth and sever ties with kinship, those, those who do so, are the ones whom Allah has cursed. So you subject yourself to being cursed by Allah. We strive day and night to maintain ties with Allah Azza wa Jal. You want this tie to be cut, then sever ties with kinship. In a Qudsi narration, and this is reported, by Imam Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al Albani. Allah Azza wa Jal said about the tie of kinship. He said, I will maintain ties with he who maintains ties with it, meaning with kinship, meaning I'll support him, I'll give him victory, I'll shower him with my blessings, and I will sever ties. I will cut ties with the one who severs ties with kinship. This is a serious matter to be away from Allah. To be on your own without the help of Allah is destructive in all measures. We ask Allah Azza wa to enable us to maintain ties with kinship and to shower us with His blessings.